translating words there. I told him, now that I see you have notes, any question I have, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're up to. So we were, we learned this yesterday, but it leads into today's Gemara. This is a Gemara, I'm not sure if Chaim Tzvi is, is with us, but Chaim Tzvi will like this Gemara very much. Because Chaim Tzvi, it was a, it was a, is a big chus at a Satan Rebbe, who was very makbid on Yon Itznius. So let's see what the Gemara says. My Tikkun Gadol. There were big renovations, the mission says. There's a Tikkun Gadol that was made by the Beis HaMikdash for the Simchus Beis HaSheva. So Amr Belazer, Ka'ezer Shashaninu, Chalaka Ha'isa Berishayim. Originally, the walls of the Ezra Shemoshim were completely flat. And the renovation that they did was the Kifua Gezustera. They put horizontal beams coming out from the walls at, let's say, a height of 10 feet from the ground, for instance, which they then put planks upon to build a bank, a balcony. Uh, I'm not sure about the guardrail, but there was definitely a balcony there. The Eskino, and they made it the Kanash, Yunoshim Yosh Vosh Milamaylo. The women were on top. But Noshim Milamat, and the men were below. And actually, this is the Makar Atayam Yuzer, where many shuls, like our shul as well, keeps the women in the gallery. There's a there's a, a, a higher level, a balcony. This is where it comes from, from the base of Mikdash. Originally, everything was on one level. The women were in the Nashim. The men gathered on the plaza of Harabais. But you blame the Kalas Rosh. It led to Kalas Rosh. They were looking in because the instruments were on the stairs. They were looking in and created mingling. So the women were in the plaza and the men were inside the Ezra's Nashim. But they call us Rosh. They're on the same level. It, it, it led to, to too much mingling. So at that point, and then they did this renovation to create a balcony where the women could be above. You're not allowed to modify the design. You're not allowed to modify the design. You know how to modify the design of the base of Mikdash? Vaksiv, it says in the Pasuk, Hakol Bichsav, Miyad Hashem, Allah Yiskel. Everything of the structure of the base of Mikdash was dictated by their boy Nishlodom to Dovan HaMelech and Nasan HaNovi. Rashi says to God HaChoyz of Nasan HaNovi. And everything was exactly as per design. So you can't just go modify the design. How could they go? How could how could the rabbanim of those days decide that they're going to change the design of the Beis Hamikdash? Um, Rav, Rav said, They actually found the pasuk that gives them a right that not only gives them a right, that gives them a responsibility to make this change. And the pasuk that we're quoting is a pasuk that describes in Novi Zechariah that describes a scene of the Levaya of Mashiach ben Yosef, Lasad Lavai, who's going to be a Mashiach ben David. It's going to be a Mashiach ben Yosef. And Mashiach ben, Doi, ben Yosef is going to die in the Melchemes Gagamaga. So there was a very big Hesper, a big Levi, and a big Hesper for him. So it says, V'savta ha'aretz, mishpachis, mishpachis levad. The Hesper was made where individual families were gathered in individual groups. And not only that, mishpachis based David levad, unashem levad. Even if people, it's only family, if it's only family, we can sit and mix seating. That's not what it was. It was only family. It was the only the mishpacha based of it, and it was the men levat and the shame levat, even though it was only family. So they said to themselves, Amru, they said, You can make a kalvachoymer from what's happening over there. They're not in a frivolous mood. They're by a levaya. What type of, what type of uh, ludity or or, 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 or promiscuity will break out by Leviah. And the Yitzhara Shalot Ben, that was after the point where the Yitzhara was destroyed already. Kedokamar Kra Rashi says, Vasi Roisi es leba eben, will come on Omer Shachat Shprochu Shoichtan. So that's already, there's no Yitzhara. Yet still, they are going to sit lost to Lavi, on return, and Noshim Levad, and Noshim Levad. So Achshav now, but a Simchus Beis HaShayeva. Shasukim Simcha, we're very happy, which could lead to Kalas Rosh. And the Yitzhara Shalot Ben, the Yitzhara for Znus was still there. Allah has come of a come, surely we have to do something to separate the men from the women. 
So Moish Zambach asked me a very, very interesting question. He asked if it was so important to keep the men separated from the women, so why Taka wasn't that in the original design of the Beis HaMittosh? So I'm throwing that question out. If they, were so important, they weren't together in the Beis HaMittosh. They were separate. It's just not separate enough. Right, so uh, if it wasn't separate enough, why didn't Hashem make that into design? Why do we have to be firmer than God? God thought that all the Bnei Yisrael's and the Nahil Gebenchen. No, he was more oh, realistic than that. Yeah. that they were. <laughs> so I had a thought, and I don't know if it's a good thought, but Moshe Ahmed was master. And that is, the Rabbani Shalom, you could ask a different question. Why did the Rabban make Isra Muksa? Why did they make all the Isra the Rabbani? If, if, that's, if that's how Hashem wanted, then Hashem would have made it. The territory is the Rabbani Shalom built a Torah to be given over and to be monitored and to be administered by the Rabban. And for Hashem Bedavka did it this way. Hashem, Hashem made the Beis in this design, but he also made those Tsukim to show that, yes, sometimes Bez and the Rabbanim have to make Tikkunim based on what's going on in their generation. And Hashem, you know, everyone likes to say, Yisud Afrimif in the Zayde? What's the Bez? But the Zayde is like, if you, nobody ever complained. But I say, Frim is exact. The terrorists is sometimes, sometimes the Rabbanim see that, yes, you have to be frimid in the Zayda, because in the Zayda's days, maybe this wasn't an issue, and now it is an issue, and now we have to do something about it. So I believe the Rabbanim built it into the Torah that we realize that the Rabbanim have the right to make Zeris, and they have the right to change things because they see the need. And that's how the Torah is administered. It's administered by the Rabbanim of the generation. That's what I thought. I don't know. That's the... Makes sense. Makes sense. Also, I'm I'm curious why if they made so many changes. Why don't they change the name already? It's confusing. Uh, you have the Ezra Snoshim and you have men over there. Uh, everything has changed, right? They didn't bother to change the name. They called it Ezra Snoshim because the oil figured by Kiddush there'll be better food there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll accept that there it's too. <laughs> Back. Oh, so I just wanted to share a, a beautiful story with the Satan Rebbe. The Satan Rebbe was very mocked in segregating uh, boys from girls, even at a very, very young age. So the Satan Rebbe was once approached by somebody and said, Rebbe, I'll bring you a raya that young children don't have to be separated. Because there's a Gemara in Shabbos that discusses a case where they lost the key to the Bismedrish, which was which was out in the field, it was in the Rishos Rabbim. They lost the key to the Bismedrish somewhere in the field. And they needed to find it. And even when they would find it, they would need to have a child bring it without instructing them to bring it. So what they did was, is they sent out little boys and girls to play. And this way, one of them when playing would find it. So you see a riot from here that the little boys and the little girls play together. So without skipping a beat, the Satan Rebbe says, Adarabe. from there you have a riot that they know how to play together. Because they knew that if they would send out the boys and the girls to get it to play, the boys would look down at the floor the whole time. They wouldn't even want to look up because of the girls there. And if they looked at the floor the whole time, then they'll find the keys because it was on the floor. <laughs> so Dr. Gamora, how is Beda Maya Vidite? What exactly was this Hespit? So the Val we're learning, it was the Hespit for Mashiach Ben Yosef, but there's actually a Machlekes about that. So Dr. Gamora, Pligiba, there's actually a machlekes between Rabdois and Rabbanon with this Hespit that we're discussing, the soft arts and this possible in Zechariah, what exactly is it referring to? Chad Omar al Mashiach ben Yosef, Shenerach, who would kill in, who's going to get killed in the Chemas going to the Mobit, the Chad Omar al Yetzer Hara, Shenerach. It's the Yetzer Hara that gets killed. So, Frank the Gemara, Bishlam al Aman Domar al Mashiach ben Yosef Shenerach. I can understand if Mashiach ben Yosef gets killed, that's a cause for availus, for crying. They looked at me about this horrible tragedy that this person is killed. So Rashi, you start with the horror show of name. They're going to see this corpse in front of them. The sub to love and they're going to cry for it. Like someone's crying for a Ben Yochid. In other words, it's so painful that they lost their only child. If it's the Yitzhar, they got killed. You should make a husband for killing the Yitzhara? Simcha boy It should be a party. Ding dong, the witch is dead. This is a huge simcha. 
So this should be celebrated. Why are they crying? Am I bochu? Why are they crying? Like is going to take the and he's going to shech the Yitzhar in front of the Tzadikim, and in front of the Rishayim as well. Now the question is, why is the Rebbein Shalom shechting the Yitzhar? The Yitzhar didn't do anything wrong. He did his job. His job was to try to be Mahdi Klai Yisrael, so that Klai Yisrael will get the schus by not listening to the Yitzhar. And he did his job. So why is it that he's getting killed? So the Mepharshim tells us, the Gemara tells us, that the Rebbein Shalom told the Yitzhara, convince the Yidin to do a virus. But the Yitzhara decided to do his job even better than he was instructed to. And not only did he convince them that the Averis aren't Averis, he convinced them that their Averis are mitzvahs. And that was going too far. And for that, he deserves to get shechted. Like we all know, the way to hell is paved with good intentions. Many people do Averis and they are angered at but they're doing a mitzvah. I remember once there was someone who was giving um, bad, wrong information about somebody. I was writing a shidduch, and the person who I was writing a shidduch was hearing bad and wrong information from Mr. Mr. A. So I asked Rabbi Lowy, should I call this person and tell them that they're giving wrong information and they're ruining a shidduch? So Rabbi Lowy told me, of course you shouldn't, because they don't think they're doing an avera. They think they're doing a mitzvah. You can't stop them from doing a mitzvah. They believe that they're a hero. They're saving somebody from falling in. So there's no reason to even mention it because they're doing a mitzvah. And that's what the Yitzhah does. And that, what, that's why he gets shechted because he makes people believe that when they're doing a virus, they're actually doing a mitzvah. So it says, Tzadikim nidl melahem kahar This Yitzhah to the Tzadikim looks like a massive, overwhelming, overpowering mountain that should give someone complete yush from even trying to attack it. But a Rishoyim need no let the To the Rishoyim, the Yitzhar looks like a little fine thread. Both the Tzadikim as well as the Rishoyim cry. Tzadikim Boichin Boimrim, Heichi Chaylanu Lichboish Har Gavoy Kazeh. How were we able to overcome this terrible Yitzhar? There's many different shatam as to precisely what it was that they're crying about. Rashi says, and his they remembered the pain and the difficulty and the nisyonis that they suffered. It's an emotional crying and not a crying of sadness. They're happy, but finally, their painful period, when people go through a very, very painful period in their lives and then it gets resolved, they cry from happiness, they cry from emotion. And it's that type of crying that the tzaddikim are going to do. On the other hand, the Rishoyim are going to cry because they feel very foolish. How is it that we weren't able to win over this very light, seemingly powerless Yitzhahara? And we, we fell for it. It's humiliating. They're crying over their loss. And the Kodesh Brochu himself, Kibay Yochel, is also shocked at how these guys fell for this scam artist, for this con artist, the Yitzhahara. Shenemar Koyimar Hashem Tzavakais, Ki Yifle Be'enei She'eris Ha'am Mazeh Be'yom Ha'mahim, just like the Am is going to be shocked at how they fell for this con artist, Kach Be'enei Yifle. So too, the Rabbi Hashem says, in my eyes, it's also a Pella, how it is that these Rishoyim fell for the tricks of the Yetzirah. So it's interesting to note, the Yetzirah's job is to give us Bechira. In other words, to lighten the, the, the severity of Averis so that we should have Bechira. But so the Yetzirah was smart as Madoff was. <laughs> He's smarter. So he, his job is to, is to create a scenario where it doesn't look so bad. So why was it much more severe for the tzaddikim than it was for the Rishoyim? And the simplest answer is, is because the Baal tzaddikim are more iskarbet, you need to up the ante to keep the balance. And therefore, as someone becomes better and better, in order to be able to make sure that it's still, there's still Bechira, the Yetzirah has to get stronger and stronger. And we're going to come back to that a little bit later. 
Now, if, I don't know if everybody remembers, there was a Yid in Arbus Medrash whose name was Yigal Gurvitz. And he moved there to Israel today, he lives in Petah Tikva. And he told me that his father was actually a Talmud of the Chavetz Chaim. And the Chavetz Chaim used to speak for the Yeshiva boys by Shalashudas. And one Shalashudas, he comes in and he says, This morning at 5.30, when I opened my eyes, the Yitzhahara was waiting for me. And I want you to know, boys, you shouldn't ignore the Yitzhahara. You have to have a relationship with the Yitzhahara. You keep your friends closer and your enemies even closer. And he tells me, Sulmayer, it's 5.30 in the morning. What are you doing up? What am I doing up? I have work to do. I have to go do Voidu Hashem. Sulmayer, you're 85 years old. You know you could sleep. You're a lot of, you're weak already. You're old. You can sleep another half hour. Nothing's going to happen to you if you take another half hour of sleep. He says, what are you talking about? I have so much to learn. I have so much to dive and I have things to do. He says, what are you talking about? You learned already Kala Tarikudo. You already printed the Mishnah Brewer. You printed the Chavetz Chaim. You've done it all. You learned it all. What, what are you missing? You can take it easy. So he says, but I have work to do. He says, yeah, but you're an old man and you should rest more. So I asked the answer, tell me, my friend, how old are you? He says, I'm about five and a half thousand years old. He says, and you're at, you're at work already. I better get to work quickly. So the Yitzhar is always trying to convince you of, 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 of things, and you have to, we have to know how to get around it. Omar Abbasi, Yitzhar, Bitchila Daima Lachut Shabuchyan. At the beginning, the Yitzhar is very, very slight. It's like the, the fiber of a spider web, very easy to break loose from. But Ulubasaif, if you continue indulging in the Yitzhar's nonsense, <laughs> it ends up being thick like a tow truck chain that can tow, that can tie you up, you'll never get out of it. First, the oven schlepped you with nothing ropes. And then it becomes thick like a tow truck chain. It's not having its hoi. Thanks, Moish Stern, for bringing that to my attention. Zog the hell of the Moravat. Tanner Abon. Mashiach bin David. Oh, I, I, I forgot to speak out. What is the significance of a spider web? If you see a spider web outside your house by your eaves, can't climb up to get it, how would you get rid of the spider web? So, most people that I know would take their garden hose and spray it away because water dissolves the spider web. So the lesson from that is before the Yitzhara takes you over, when you're trying to resist the Yitzhara, when it's still, when it's still like a chutzal buchya, there with mayim, which is a mayim al or with, or with crying to the Rebbe in tefillah, to beg your Rebbe to protect us from the Yitzhara, you can have it in tzachan. But once you're caught in, then it's very, very difficult to dig your way out. Who's hopefully going to reveal himself very soon. told him, Ask for me anything, and I'll give it to you. And Rashi says the reason why the Rabbi Islam does this is because. It's because I want a gala hayoyim a gala lebriyosh shebniyata. I want people to know that you're Mashiach, you're the chosen. So I'm going to do something very special for you. Shenemar it says asapra el choik. I'm going to go into the pasuk at the side. It says asapra el choik Hashem. I'm going to say over what the Rebbeinu Shem told me. Omar Allah, he told me bniyata, you're my son. Ani hayoyim yiladeti. I gave birth to you today. Sha'almi men, he asked for me something. I'll give you everything, and you'll, you'll be able to take over the goyim. You'll be, you'll be matzliach. So Rashi says, like we said, quoted earlier today, I'm going to show everybody that you are my son, you're the Mashiach. So Voshteta, it says as follows. What did he ask for? Sha'almi men, he the goyim, so what happens? He's there in a war, and he sees that his counterpart, Mashiach, when Yosef gets killed. The Chivin Shara, Mashiach ben Yosef, Shenerak. Once he saw Mashiach ben Yosef was Nerak, he forgot about the Maserati that he wanted. And he forgot about the beautiful house that he wanted and the apartment in Israel. He forgot about all that. 
Now he's just worried about his life. All I want from you is life. Because he sees people dying around. He told him, Chaim, life is what you're asking. Even before you asked me for life, your father David already said Nevu about you. That you're going to get. Because your your Gzeda, David Amalek, already said Nevu that you're going to get your life. So I, I want to share a beautiful story. When people don't know if they're going to be living in another minute, they're in a war. So all they think about is life. They forget about any other needs that they have. And there, there was a Yid, a big tzaddik who lived in Yerushalayim. His name was Reb Chaim Brim. And he was a Yinga Manchik in 1948 during the War of Independence. And during that war, it was treacherous. There were bombs going everywhere. Yidin were getting blasted from all sides. So people naturally were huddling in bomb shelters because they were terrified. They didn't know if in a minute they're going to blow up. And Reb Chaim Brim was a Yinga Manchik at the time. And his wife was very, very sick. She was dying. And he didn't know what to do. So he went to the Zvila Rebbe. Now, the Zvila Rebbe is very interesting. During the 48th War, you know, you don't think of what the ramifications of losing land is. But during the 48th War, Israel lost Harazesi. They went into Jordanian control. So they lost the cemetery. So after during the 1948 War and the short period after that, they did not have... They didn't have where to bury people in, 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 in Yerushalayim. It was terrible. They did not have where to bury Mason. It was a disaster. So what they did was is they made a whole bunch of little cemeteries. Wherever they found an empty lot, boom, they made it into a cemetery. And there's a lot of places all over Yerushalayim where there's just a lot here, a small area, where there is a small base of kvars. It took five years to develop Har Manuchus. And then they had a proper base of kvars. So during those five years, there was one empty lot that was right next door to the Knesset building in Rechavia. And there's a, in that basic forest, this Villa Rebbe is buried. He died a couple of years after the 48th war, and he's buried there. People discover that he's there. He's a big Poyle Jewess. People go there. I was never there, but people, people go there. He's a big name. Anyway, so Reb Chaim Brim went to this Villa Rebbe, and this Villa Rebbe said, he took out a paper, and he wrote, whoever signs on this paper that they're, made, that they're going to donate a year of their life to Mrs. Brim, I guarantee them that they're going to survive this war. So he, Reb Chaim Brim took it, and he says, you get, get yourself 50 volunteers. So he went into a bomb shelter, and for sure, everybody's terrified. They don't know if they're going to be alive in a minute. And within, within a couple of minutes, he had 50 people who signed up for this for this giving off their life. And I'm, I'm, 30 years later, maybe they thought, yeah, maybe I could have used it an extra year. But at that moment, in that bomb shelter, many women, 50 women, jumped up to give a year of their life. And Baruch Hashem, they all survived the war. And to the day, 50 years later, Rabbits and Brim was Nefteris. So this was in 48. So in 98, I don't know if it stems with the date, Mr. First will tell us if Rabbits and Brim died in 1998. Do you know what year she died in? Around then. So it stims. It stims. And they found that paper. They found that paper uh, somewhere. I know, I know that paper was found. They made a big deal about it. But that's the Maisa. There's, there's a famous story with the Panovich Rov. He always knew how to make a buck. So the Panovich Rov was once on an airplane that was going down. It was going to crash. So he ran up to the front of the plane and he said, whoever promises that they're going to give $10,000 to the Panovich Yeshiva, I guarantee they're going to live. And he had nothing to lose by saying that. So that was another uh, such example. When people think they're going to die, they, they'll be very generous. He was my cousin, Rebbitson. I know, I know. That's why I thought Rebbitson was your cousin. I remember yeah. wanting to go to him. Yeah. It was a very El Chaid. So, Hinda. Hindi. Oh, that was your name? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So that was the Maisa with the Prime Brim and Zvila Rebbe. Okay, so let's see the Gemara Vatim. You know, the, the, the only reason why he had to go to the Zvila Rebbe to get this bracha is because they didn't have Kupa Tair yet. They had Kupa Tair, he could have just dialed the number and pushed one for Rufu Shalema, and they would have, all his problems would have went away. But since they didn't have Kupa Tair, then they had no choice. They had to go to the Zvila Rebbe. Uh, but this uh, is the Chaim Brim was a, a, big, uh, a big guy. Oh, yeah. He was, 
I was fortunate enough to learn with him in Harusa for the six months that I was in Eretz Yisrael. And how I got that Harusa up is a story in and of itself. Okay, let's see the Gemara back here. Dorish Rabbi Vira, the Vitemi Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Shiva Shemois Yesh Leli Yetzirah. The Yetzirah seemed to have also went bankrupt in the past because he actually had seven different names. Hakadosh Baruch Hu Kari Ra. Hakadosh Baruch Hu called him Ra, evil. Shenemar Ki Yetzir Leifa Adam Ra Min Deurav. Moshe Kari Aro. Moshe called him an Aro. Shenemar Umalte Mis Arla Slavavka. David Kari Tomei. Shenemar Leif Tar Brali Alekim. Vice the guys, Machlal, Dikal Tommy, there must be a Leif Tommy. If Hashem especially gave me a Leif Tar. Shlema Karusine. Shlema called him an enemy. Or Leif Tar Berlikim is actually we say it in, in the in the Dover Hashem. And then Shlema called him a Sine, an enemy. Shanemar Imrov Sanacha. If your enemy is hungry, Hachileu Lechem. Be good to him. Be good to your enemy. Feed him bread. Vim Tommy, if he's thirsty, Ashkeni Maim, give him. Water. You know why? Because when you are nice to your enemy, it kills him. It's like you're putting hot coals on the head. It's so painful for your enemy to benefit from you, he can't take it. And if you do it, Hashem will pay you back. Now we're dashing the Pasuk So we're saying, if your enemy is hungry, he wants to make you unavera, lechem. Rashi's lechem means milchama, fight with him, or a lechem could be referring to Torah. In some of his thirsty ashkeu mind, which also refers to Torah. Ki gecholam at the Rashi, you're hurting him by learning Torah, and therefore al tikri yeshalom lach ala yashli menulach. Now this is fascinating what Rashi says. Yashli menulach, if you're Isaac and Torah, yashli menulach. Rashi says she he shalom yitzrich ha'ima. Hashem is going to make it that your yitzrich is going to make peace with you. By Havach, and he'll start liking you instead of being your enemy who's trying to undermine you and be machshul you at every play, at every at every step. He's actually going to turn around and help you. Val he will stop trying to get you to do averes. So if you learn the Chassidish verb, it says that you can reach a madrega where your yetsara actually becomes a yetsatov. And the being a raya from the from the um, Gemara that says that that if you have yetsara, barasa tera tavlin. Tavlin is a spice. It doesn't destroy what's placed into it. Rather, it improves it and it enhances it and flavors it, so, which indicates that the Torah doesn't just destroy the Yetzar. The Torah will actually help you reshape the Yetzar to bring it over from the dark side onto the good side. Yeshaya Karimichshar. He referred to the Yetzar as a stumbling block. Shenemer Saidu Saidu Panu Derech Harimu Michshar Derech Ami. Clear, clear the road from obstacles. Yechesel kare evan. He called it a stone. Shenema basiroisi a slave for oven. Bibusarchem. I'll take away your hard heart, um, and therefore you'll you'll have a gefil. Yoyev kare tsefuni. He called him tsefuni. Literally means northern in the pasuk, but it's being dashed as someone who's hidden, someone who's a, 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 a snake. Who hides and gets you when you're not looking? Now, these seven names, what they mean to so the whole bunch of Torah on it. One stickle is that it's the different tactics and tools that the Yetzirah uses to, to get us. Sometimes he comes on hard, sometimes he makes you apathetic, he gives you apathy, you don't care, he makes your heart stone. Someone needs help and he makes you not care. So sometimes he just makes you strip. The Yetzirah comes with so many different identities to get you, and you never know where he's coming from. But I think the Gros says something very, very fascinating, and it, it talks about the deterioration of the world. And he says, Hashem called it Ra, because that's what it was. But eventually people became somewhat desensitized to Averis, and people didn't think the Yetzirah was so evil. And Moshe already had to call him an Oro. Oro means it stops your heart, to get you to do a virus. By David, there was more degradation uh. in our fear of a virus and our repulsion to a virus. And now it's only tummy. It's only a, a little bit of impurity. Shloyma said, it's not even part of us. It's not even in us. It's an, it's an external force. It's, it's something that hates us. And then Yeshaya called it a mixture. It doesn't even hate us, but it's there that could sometimes trip us up. 
Yechezel called it a stone because then people didn't even look at it as something bad. It was something inert, like a stone that could possibly hurt you, but it's just a stone. And then Yoel said, so funny, it's not even around. He almost, there are people almost denied his existence. It only surfaces up once in a while. Based on this chat, today, we should call the Yetzirah Sahara the Yetzirah Toif. Because today, what we know as horrible Averis are today mitzvahs, and to be celebrated. I'm going to keep the Svani, the hidden Yitzhar, away from you. This Yitzhar is like a dormant terror cell that's waiting in the heart of a person to be activated. I'll throw the Yitzhar away to a, a desolate place. To a place where there's no one there for the Yitzhar to corrupt. Originally, before we banished the Yitzhar, the Yitzhar was focused, his face was towards the eastern Yam. And he focused, the Yitzhar focused on the first base of Mikdash, and caused it to be Kharif. And as we'll soon see, his, his ultimate trophy is the Kharif. And then the Yitzhar turned his eyes on the second base of Mikdash. And then he caused so much problem for the Eden that, that there was already an odor from the horrible things that he caused. It was an odor, there was an odor hovering around. Why? He didn't even focus on the Goyim, he focused his efforts on being Mashu Yid. Which is how the Pasuk ends. The trophy that the Yetzirah seeks is to be Machshel Tamidi Chacham. That's what he wants more than anything else. More than anything else. And, 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 and that's why he's so bad, because he wants to take us out. The Gemara shares a story that shows how the Yetzirah goes and focuses more on Tamidi Chacham. He heard a man talking. He met a woman. Maybe they were at a trade show. They met at a, at a convention. They met at a market. And the man told the woman, and they were both married, just not to each other. You know what? We're both headed down this road. Let's travel together. So he was worried a man and a woman are traveling together. It's Yichud. Who knows what type of terrible Averis it could lead to? So Abai said, I need to stop them from doing an Averis. Uh, Amri said, Ezel I'm going to follow them so that in case they become too friendly, I'll be able to stop them from doing any Averis. Ozul Basrayu Tlasa Parsi, he followed them three Parsois, which probably a couple of hours of traveling by Agmo in the Agam. Now, he have a Parshami Adodi, eventually they reached the place where they had to go in different directions. Each one to their own home. Shmeinu, he heard the Amri, Orchin Rechika. We have a long way to go that are in different directions. But Utsav Simbesimo, the time that we were able to travel together was truly a pleasure. It was truly a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. So and So. Thank you for traveling with me. I truly enjoyed your company. But no Avera happened. Omar Abaye, Abaye said, Iman de Sonili. Hava, if this would have been a person who I hate, and he was referring to himself, if it was me, I would not have been able to re refrain from sinning. So he felt terrible. Here, this he didn't even do anything that was improper, and I would have for sure been nixal. And someone once went to the Rashiv and said, Rebbe, Rebbe, Yechab So the Rebbe said, Yas Nisyonis, Yas Demyonis. You think you could do an affair if you want? You need to find a willing partner. And somebody once told me there was this Yerushalmi who was in downtown Yerushalayim in Rehov Yafo, and he saw a woman scantily clad, and he says to the Yitzhara, Yitzhara, you've convinced me already. Now you just have to convince her. But I'll call upon him, Abai was saying that I wouldn't have been able to. So he was very depressed about it. He went and leaned on a on the gate to a home, you know, like someone who's like focusing and thinking and he's chewing over in his head how bad he feels that he 
he, the big Rosh Hashiva, couldn't even control himself in the place where a regular person could control himself. Umitzar, and he was very upset. Why upset? By a gate, by a door. So the Ben Yoda says something beautiful. In the Gemara Shabbos, we learned that it says someone who has Torah, but not Yerushalayim, it's like he has the door, he has the key to the door of the gate, but he doesn't have the house. So he can get into the gate, but he can't go anywhere. So that's what Abai was saying. He was there by the gate, meaning I have Torah, but I don't have the house. I don't have the year of Shemayim that I should have. And he felt very bad about himself. So also Saba, which the Mephoshim tell us is always referring to Eliyahu Novi, Tanulay told him, don't worry, don't feel bad about it. It's called Anybody who's greater, his Yitzhar is greater. And this brings up a very important question. Because we learned that the Yitzhar only ups the ante so that there should be Bechira. So how is it that Abai would have succumbed? I, the Yitzhar is not going to make it unfair. The Yitzhar is just going to make it that even on Abai's level, there should be a Nisoy. So some of the unfortunately say that's what the Yitzhar is supposed to do. But once again, the Yitzhar goes over and above on his job. And he makes it that the, the Nisoy is so great that even the Tzaddik cannot control himself. And that's another reason why he shechted, because the Rebbe Hashem asked him to do a job, and he did a job that's much more potent than what he was supposed to, and that's why he deserves to be shechted. The other great question you have here is, how was Abaya able to follow these people? It's Yichud. The loch is, when you're traveling, you need to have at least three men with one woman. And the reason for it is, is because if one of the if there's only two men, if one of them goes to the bathroom, the other one is going to be left with her. And you it, it's danger. That's if there's always three men. Even if one goes to the bathroom, there'll always be two men to watch each other. So how could Abaya follow them along? So they say a couple of different shots. One shot they say is Abaya wasn't close to them. He was far back. So it wouldn't have been considered that he was traveling with her, but he was close enough that he could watch what they were doing. The other shot they say is Abaya just made sure that whenever that guy went to the bathroom, he went along with him. So he was never alone with the woman. And if he went to the bathroom, he was safe. I, the other guy has yichud. Listen, what could he do? He was trying to help the other guy. But if, if he had to go to the washroom, it's no worse than if Abai didn't come in the first place. So he was doing whatever he could, but he was avoiding the yichud. Um, Rabbi the Yitzhar of a person gets stronger and stronger every day. This I could agree to. You know, the, the Gemara where it says that if, that if you learn Torah, you could make the HR your friend, that, 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 um, that I can't testify to personally. But this I can testify to personally. Shanamar, it says, Rak, ra, kol hayoyim. The HR is bad every day, and Rashi learns, kol hayoyim, kol hayoyim Every day, the riches, the bad, the evil of the rich, of the HR gets stronger and stronger. Omar Abshim ben Lokish. The entire person gets stronger every day. And is trying to kill him. The Russia referring to the Yitzhara is constantly looking on, at, for some way, for some plan, for some trick to kill the Tzadik with Averis. If it wasn't for the fact that the Rebbein Shalom helps us, we wouldn't be able to control ourselves from the Yitzhara. Hashem will not abandon us in the hands of the Yitzhar, and he won't condemn us when he when he when he paskins for us. Tan very small in Pogabach Manuvalza, if this disgusting manuval referring to the Yitzhar, what should you do? It's funny that we refer to somebody as a manuval very, very callously. So I someone told me, I think even somebody in the Zoom meeting told me once that it's not we call a goy a shegitz and we call a, a, a goy a shiksa. If you think about it, it's not becoming for us to refer to somebody with such a disparaging name. You're calling them a shegetz or a shiksa or a shukets. It's not a nice way to address people, even goyim. So why do we why do we address people that way? So someone told me it's because being that the yitzhara to be with a goy or a goyta is so strong, we purposely call them such a disparaging name so that so that in our minds we can reinforce and constantly tell ourselves. That this is disgusting for us, we shouldn't come close to them. I once I once heard such a because otherwise it makes sense. Why would we refer to a human being to a Tzalam Alakim as a Shegitz or a Shiksa? It's because we need to separate ourselves from them, something that could be alluring. 
So that's why we, we can call the Yitzhara a novel, because the Yitzhara tries to dress himself up to, to allure us into doing bad things. So we have to refer to him as a novel to know that he's disgusting. And we have to stay far away from anything. We shouldn't even entertain his ideas, even to entertain him in a discussion. We have to run the other way. He's disgusting. We have to look at him like, 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 like a horrible, homeless, smelly guy. If the Torah is going to be like a stone, in the Beshmedish, the Torah will dissolve him. In Barzalu, if he's strong like steel, Mispoitus, he'll, he'll, he'll bust apart. In Evan, how do you know that the stone will, will, will dissolve from the from the Torah? If you thirsty, go to water, and we learned that's referring to Torah, which is Nimshalamayim, it quenches your thirst. It says that stones will get ground down by water, just like the story with Rabbi Kiva. Let me just make sure I'm reading the word prop. I'm reading the puzzle, and I'm not um, and I'm not reading it uh, like a Chinaman. Nothing against Chinaman. It's just, that, it's just that their first language is not is not Hebrew. So let's see where it says it. Uh, so it's over here. Um, let's see where it is. Hoikal Tommy Lechulamayim. Where it says over here. Avonim shachakumoyim. That's what it says. Avonim shachakumoyim. So the stones will be will be dissolved by the water. In Barzalu, if he's metal, mispoitus he'll blow apart. Get smashed. Chsiv haloikoy devari. My words, meaning the Torah, keish are like fire. No mashem uchefatish yufutzet sela, like a hammer that will smash a rock. Toys is asks. We're talking about the metal. If it's kabarzal, mispoitus. So how do you see from the fact that if you take a hammer and you smash a rock, that the rock will splinter, how do you see that the metal gets damaged? For carrot, here the rock gets damaged. So it tells us as one shot that Uchafata Shefoyta Sela means that when you hit a rock hard with a hammer, sometimes the hammer will break. So Uchafata Shefoyta Sela, it's like a hammer that will get damaged when you smash it against the rock, the hammer will get damaged. That was one shot in Toysus. The other shot Toysus discusses is a, a little bit of a change in your soyuz. He's a con artist. He convinces someone to do a various and then, and then after he does what's called entrapment, then he said he stands testimony to say to say testimony of what he did wrong. First, he gets him involved in in in, in a various, and then he he says testimony against him. He's mamish, a double, he double crosses you. He, he sets you up and then he double crosses you by condemning you. Now there's a big shaila. How could a Yitzhar, who is a Sine, we learned earlier on Amir that he's considered a Sine, an enemy, a Sine is not believed to say testimony on his enemy. So how could he even do Aetis? So most of the Mephoshim say the reason why a person gets condemned is not because of they believe the testimony of the Yitzhar. But everything is known. It's just it's just the process, but Avada, no one's relying on the testimony of the Yitzhara. That's one shot. Another shot is the Yitzhara in this world is our enemy, but on the next world he's not, and therefore he's believed. Shanemar, where do you see that the Yitzhara gets you entrapped and then he messes you up? Shanemar, it says, if you treat your servant too softly, you know what's going to happen eventually. Eventually he's going to. Be the owner. He's going to be the boss. He's going to be. He's going to double cross you. He's going to turn on you. So like sometimes if you're too nice to employees, then they become unionized, and they turn on you and they take you over. Sorry, I figured I couldn't control that. Now, what does this have to do with saying testimony against you? So Zotim because if you use the special code to decipher the word monoin, it means sahada. It means testimony. So it's mefanik minoy adoy vechrisa yia sahada. How do you get from monoin to sahada? Shekin ba'atbach, shor b'chia. Rab had a code. You know, we know there's a code called atbash, where you could substitute the letter aleph, the letter tof, the letter bez, the letter shin. So there was a different code that was called atbach, shor b'chia. And with that, koren a sahada menoin. A sahada, which is an edos, would be menoin. And how do you get that? Atbach is about tens. So instead of the aleph and the tof, the aleph and the tes will be interchangeable. Because one and nine is ten. The base and the ches will be interchangeable because two and eight is ten. 
So let's go, let's go look up Rashi, and Rashi will help us decipher the code, how you get from a noin to Sahada. So Rashi says, you have one and nine, two and eight, three and seven, and four and six. All of those, all the pairs that you add them together, you get the total of 10, that those letters are interchangeable. Haras Sirios. These are the letters that the pair adds up to 10. Then you have Yud and Sadik, which is 90 and 10 is 100, Chav and Pei, 20 and 80, 30 and 70, Mem and Samach is 40 and 60, Haremeya. So these are the pairs of letters that add up to 100. They're also interchangeable. Kaf and Tzadik, Reish and Pei, Shein, Shein and Nun, and Tov and Mem, Hare al Payim, they're going to they're gonna, um, add up to 1,000 because um, because uh, the 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 Sophist letters are one's a hundred, the one's a five hundred. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but they these pairs add up to a thousand. So one I believe is nine hundred plus one hundred is a thousand. The one's eight hundred and two hundred, and one's uh, seven hundred and three hundred, and then there's six hundred and four hundred. That's how it adds up. So the Samach is six hundred, and the uh, or the or the is six hundred. And the tough is 400. These are the sets of letters that add up to a thousand. The five does not have a pair to, to combine with to get to 10. And the nun doesn't have a, a pair to add up to, to, to be reached 100. And the chaf doesn't have anything to add up to a thousand. So, therefore, based on that, if you have the word menoin, so the mem. We learned earlier is interchangeable with the samach. The nun is interchangeable with the hey, because we say hey, nun, and chaf are all interchangeable because they're they're the letters that don't have a match. The vav is interchangeable, like we said over here with dalit. And then once again, the nun is with hey. So you get sahada from the word menoin using the code of Rabchia, the atbach code of Rabchia. Rafuna Rami, Rafuna had a stira. Ksiv it says kiruach znun and hisse, a a a a wind of znus or of turning away. Um, hisse means to like tetanu. It turned me away. It led me down a wrong path. Tos ba'alma. It moves me away, which means which means it's external to me, but it's turning me in the wrong into the wrong direction, which seems to indicate that the yitzar is some external force. It's not so strong. But the other pasuk is bekirba. It's going to be inside us. So what is it? First, it's going to be sort of internal and it's going to make us do things bad. But then the HR is going to get inside us and destroy us. We're going to see a series of psukim that first considers the HR just a passerby. He's just passing by your house, but not even connected to you. But if you give him attention, then he's suddenly going to become your guest. Now he's your house guest. He's inside. Well, the eventually is going to take over your house. She's going to be. He's going to be the owner of the house. Where do you see this in the pesukim? Shenemar vayavai halach leisha asher. This passerby came to this rich man. Vayachmoel, the rich man had rechmanes and gave this passerby attention. Lakachas mitzaynoi mubekarei lasas leirach to give from his sheep and from his cattle to give to the house guest. So now he, the Yitzhak already worked his way in to become the house guest. Uchsivit says, Harosh, he took the sheep of the poor man, and he gave it to the man who came to him. So now this guy is already a balabaster. This Bazak is the marshal that I believe Nosna Novi gave David when he was giving him Musr for his Aveir with Basheva and for letting her husband get killed. But we're dashing it that it's referring to the Yitzhara. First, he's just a passerby. Then he's already your house guest. And before you know it, he owns the house and he's throwing you out. People have a small aver. Not to be offensive to anybody. If you starve it and you don't give it too much attention, it will be happy. It won't bother you. But if you make it too satisfied, which Toysus translates, Maspiyoi means, Shemarba Batashmish, Biyoi Muvalailo, someone is indulging too much in Tashmish, 
Rav, it's always going to be hungry and it's going to want more. It's going to have an insatiable appetite. Shinemar kimarisam So let's look at the pasuk inside. Um, I'm, I have it by letter yud. So the pasuk inside says kimar isem vayisbu. If you if you if you I guess if, if you're starving it and it's going to be satisfied, sovu. But if you satisfy too much, then vayorim libam. Then they're going to become too big in their hearts, and then they're going to forget them. Let's look at the Gemara in Brachas. Let's go to the Gemara in Brachas. Let's go to the Gemara in Brachas. Let's go to the Gemara in Brachas. There's four things that the Rebbein Shalom created that he has charata, that he created them. And the Arsh girl brings down from somebody that what it means is, is he didn't create them because he needed them themselves. He needed some to from them. But there's really no reason for Hashem to create them for their own reason. The Elohim, and what are the four things? Golos, Kastim, which my son writes here on top, are the people from Bavel, Babylon, the Yishmaelim, and Arabs, that we understand. The Yetzara, and the Yetzara. Golos, the Chsiv, the Atamali, Poinum, Hashem, so the Rebbe feels bad that he made Klai Yisrael go into those. This nation shouldn't even exist. So Hashem regrets that he created them. Hashem made this nation of nomads because the Arabs tend to live in ten cities in the Midbar while they're shepherding their animals. And they cause trouble and they do a virus to make Hashem angry. And the Rabbi Yishlam himself made these people. So Rabbi Yishlam is regretting that he made them because they're very bad. So let's look at this puzzle. It's a beautiful puzzle. Hashem says, the Klai Yisrael, I'm going to gather in all of those people that are in Golas, all of the lost people, I'm going to bring back everybody. And all the other people I made bad for. It means Hashem said, I made bad for them. So, and Hashem's gathering us back, so you see, he has Kharota. How did Hashem make it bad first? He gave us the Yitzhara, and that caused us to do a virus. So Hashem is sort of taking responsibility for the bad things that we did because he was the one who created the Yitzhar. Now it's very interesting. Can Hashem have charata? How does it work? Hashem regrets that he did. Hashem didn't realize the tchila. He would. How does it work? Hashem can't have to change his mind. So I want to read from Rav Rudinsky, a beautiful thought. When Hashem created the world, it says Hashem really wanted to create the world with din, but he saw the oil won't be kiyom, so he changed it to rachim. So what does that mean? He, he put up a set of drawings, and then the engineer stamped him, and then he gave it to the contractor. And in the middle of the job, the contractor says, we got a problem. This wall won't work. This is a problem. That's a problem. So they had to do a revision, and they had to change that built drawing. Like, how does that work? Their bunch doesn't make mistakes. So I heard over from Rabinsky that their bunch of them built into the world corrections, backtracking, having karata. Why? Because their bunch wanted to build the, the meaning of chuba into the very fabric of the world. If you think about it, tshuva is illogical. Once someone did an Avera, how could you undo it? So the Rebbe built the world with, with, with an afterthought to change things retroactively. So not that Hashem Taka changed his mind. Hashem built the change into the fabric of the world so that tshuva should be part of how the world was created. So now we're coming up to slichas. We should feel confident that the Rebbe built the world that our slichas should work. If it wasn't for these three psukim, which somewhat exonerates Klai Yisrael for their affairs, we would lose our footing. Chad one pasuk is the chsiv asher which we just learned is that they're born is taking responsibility for creating the Yitzhara that caused us to do affairs. So we're literally like raw material in the hand of Hashem who's forming us. So clearly our Yitzharis, our affairs that we do are because that's how Hashem created us. I'll take away your hard heart. 
So Hashem is saying, I gave you the Leva Evan. So we could tell Hashem, listen, I'm sure we do a various, but you built us that way. Rav Papa Amar, Achmehai Nami, there's a fourth Pasuk that also exonerates us because it says in the Pasuk, it says in the Pasuk, Vesruchi Eten Bekir Bechem. So let's see the whole Pasuk by Oisu Zayin. Vesruchi Eten Bekir Bechem. I will give them a ruach that they should want to do the mitzvahs, which means Hashem controls us. Till now he didn't, that's why we did a various. And the Lord said, he'll give us the ruach that we want to do mitzvahs. So once again, you see, it's not our fault of the various that we do. That's how Hashem engineered our systems. So this is talking about the Nevu of Zechariah. And let's learn the Psukim. It says, Hashem showed. Zechariah, four tradesmen. So this is a this is a Gemara that supports the trades. So let's see what it says. It says, "Vayareni Hashem arba charosh." Hashem showed me four tradesmen. Vayomar, and I asked Hashem, "Mo ela bom lasis?" What are these four tradesmen coming to do? Vayomar Leimar, he said, "Leimar ela kronos asher zoru es Yehuda kefiish leinasa roisha." These are the Leaders that came and subdued Yehuda to the point that they can't even lift their heads. So let's see what the Gemara says about this. Maninu Arba Harosh. Who were these four tradesmen that have come? Omar Abchana Barbiz, Omar Abshimin Chasida, it's Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, Elio Bakoin Tzedek. So clearly they're the good guys. Yet the Pasuk says that they came to subdue Claudius Roll. So this is going to be a problem. They didn't come. Mashiach doesn't come to subdue us. They came to rescue us. So how do you understand the Pesach? Omer Leis, Reb Chana told Reb Sheshes, you don't understand the Pesach, you're not looking at it properly. Shvil is safe with the cross. You have to look at the end of the Pesach. So let's go back into the Pesach and let's see what the end of the Pesach says. These four tradesmen came to scare away the bad chronos. To throw away the, the leaders of the Goyim. So when, when Zechariah asked, what are these four trades? Hashem was giving Zechariah background. First of all, you should know that these bad people came and subdued Klai's role. And now, referring to the trades, the trades came to chase away the bad guys. So that's that's why the four the, these four trades were avada, good people. So uh, to that, Rav Sheshes responded. To that, Rav Sheshes wrote, "Amalei b'hadi chana b'agadato." When it comes to Rav Chana, when we're discussing agadato, lomeli, I shouldn't even be opening my mouth because Rav Chana was an expert in agadato, and surely I couldn't find him make any mistake. Now the question is, why was Koyin said that Koyin said that Rashi is referring to Shem ben Noach. Why was he a trade? Now I don't know why Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, Elio was a trade. Well, Elio I know is a trade because by the Matzah Shabbos Miris, we know Elio built a whole building um, in a very short period of time. That, that's one of the stories that we think about in this Miris on Matzah Shabbos. But where is Shem ben Noach a trade? So Rashi tells Shem ben Noach was a carpenter. He was a marine carpenter. Because he apprenticed by his father Noach for 120 years to build a table. So he was very much a tradesman because he, he was a carpenter. So he was one of the trades that came to save Klai Yisrael from, from, from the, the bad um, rulers of the Goyim. They will, they will deal with the bad Malchus of Asher who came to our land, the Chiyidraich Bar Menesenu, and stomped all over our, <coughs> our, our, our um, <coughs> palaces. The Kamnu Alog Shiva Roim, I set up to save Pliers Roll, seven shepherds, who Shmoin and Sichad and eight powerful people. Man Ninu Shiva Roim, who are the seven Roim that Hashem appointed to save us from Melch Asher? David Benta, David stood in the center. Adam, Sheish, and Mishuselach, Miyamine, was on his right side, and Avram, Yaakov, and Moshe was on his left side. Who were the eight greats? 
Yishai Vishol Shmuel Amos Utsanya Titkia Titkia Umashiach Elio. So I'm not sure what the purpose of these people were, but let's see Rashi. Raja Shiva Rai Mishwan and Sikham Rashi Lo Yodati Bayam Tam. I don't know the reason for this. Kimadumali Damrina Balma of Yitzchak. We said the Yitzchak Lehechanaza. Where is Yitzchak? How come Yitzchak's not here? It's Avram and Yaakov. Where did Yitzchak go to? So the Gemara Shabbos tells us that Oza Lahatil Bon of Medina Shal Gehinim. He went to save the children from Gehinim. Tichzuki Atavinu. Now this Pazaki Atavinu is referring to the Gemara in Shabbos that says that Hashem went to Avram and said, Your children did an Avera. So Avram said, What should I do? He went to Yaakov, your children did an Avera. And he went to Yitzchak and he told the Yitzchak, Your children did an Avera. Yitzchak responded to Hashem, Kiatavinu. But they're my children, Rabbi Yisraelim. Are they not your children as well? And through that, Yitzchak was Mlam on Klai Yisrael to be able to save them. But I, I don't have an explanation as to what these eight Nesiche Adam and these seven Rayam, but Rashi seems also to, to be, to, 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 to wonder what this is. So if anybody heard a shot about this, I would very much welcome it. Zok the Gemara Vaiti. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I skipped a different mask. We learned that there were four ladders by each of these lamps. How tall were the lamps? That's about 100 feet. Could you imagine climbing up a ladder 100 feet? A single story building is about 15 feet. So 100 feet, it's like climbing up on a ladder on an eight story building. Zog to Gemara. Is Chaim Tzvi here? He, he probably wouldn't be afraid, but everybody else will be afraid. There were four young, strong, healthy, agile In their hands, they had jugs of oil that were 120 lug. Is it Does it mean in total there was 120 lug, which means 30 lug per person? I'm sorry? Nothing. I don't mind. Just, uh... Oh, I don't mind. Or is it Lechol Chad Bechad? Did each person hold 120 lug? Just to try to figure out a lug is Vov Beitzin, six eggs. So I would, say, I would say six eggs is maybe like a, an eight ounce cup. So if it's 30 lug, it will be 38 ounce cups, which 30 times eight is 240. That's 240 fluid ounces. How many fluid ounces are in a gallon? Anybody know? 32. 32 fluid ounces in the gallon? So there's 240 fluid ounces. So it's a couple of gallons. I know a gallon of water. 100, 128. 128 fluid ounces. So there's about two gallons. So two gallons, I don't know what two gallons of egg weighs, but two gallons of water, each gallon is 8.3 pounds. So we're looking about about 16, 17 pounds of, of, of water. Oil is a little lighter than water, right? We know oil is less dense because oil floats to the top. So let's say it's about 16 pounds of liquid that they each had to carry. If it was 30 load, it was 120 load, it was it was uh, 64 pounds. So Zog to Gemara, what was it? What was it? Zog to Gemara, Toshma, Uviyadeim, Kadeshem, and Shloishim, Shloishim, Lug, Shem Kula, Mei, So in fact, they each carried only about 16 pounds worth of weight. Tana, we learned, they they were stronger and more powerful. Yoiser mi bena shal stronger than the son of Marta Baspaisus, who was a very strong guy. Amur al bena shal Marta Baspaisus, they said about him, shal yonotol shtei yirechai shal shor agodol, he was able to carry two thighs of a big ox. How big of an ox? Shal akuach be'el of zuz, an ox that you would buy for a thousand zuz. It must be a huge ox. I mean, I look, imagine someone carrying two sides of beef. Each side of beef has got to weigh over 100 pounds each, right? And he would take, he was able to take him up the Kevish to the Mizbeach. Now, if I'm carrying something very heavy, I'm going to run with it to quickly put it down. But he walked slowly, one foot in front of the other foot. He walked very leisurely with this huge weight because it didn't even phase him. But they didn't let him do that. To carry two pieces of meat, two emurim, because you're supposed to have as many people as possible involved in a mitzvah. So, therefore, the Gemara, we learned 
lays out in Zvachim exactly how each carbon was split up, how many kind were needed. The larger the animal, the more kind were needed to, to each person carry something specific. So they didn't let people carry more than one thing because they wanted a lot of Kohanim involved in the mitzvah. So Frank Gemara, my Meshubach, why were these Pirche Kahuna more Meshubach, better than this strong fellow? It's because of the weight. The, the Yerech weighs a lot more than the 16 pounds of the oil. The reason why they had much harder work is because Martabas Baisha's son carried something up a ramp that was on an incline. It wasn't straight up, it was on the incline, it was flat, it was much easier to walk up. But Akasulama, we're talking about ladders, the Zak of Tuva, and it's vertical, going straight up, and it's going up, it's going up 50 amis instead of just the 10 amis of the Mizbeach. So it's much harder to climb a ladder up 50 amis with 16 pounds of oil in your hand than it would be to walk up a ramp with 100 pounds in your hand. And therefore, we say that the Perchekuna were more agile and, and more and, and more Meshubach better than the son of Martyr Spices. And I guess we could stop here. So we'll stop here. Mitchum tomorrow we're going to be learning at 7 and we'll be learning at 9. Now for the week, I was told that 640 is going to be Slichas every day. So we'll learn every day at 540. And um, and the uh, nine o'clock will be the same time because I'm sure uh, Davening will end the same time. So we'll learn at nine and we'll learn at five forty. The mission for this week. Tavach, everybody, the rain should help that we should be able to paralyze all these shoes that we need um, from the slichas. We should be zayich to get the bench to the earth. We all these are matzliach al tzliach